So the New York football giants have made their decision. They have found their man. <laughs> yeah, I can't help but laugh a little bit about this one. I'm sorry. You're in the biggest media market in the country. You're a marquee NFL franchise. And you can't even get the guy that you really want. And I don't care how much anybody involved with the Giants organization tries to spin this. Maybe some friendly Giants media tries to spin this. Giants fans try to spin this. Clearly their top target was Matt Rule, the head coach from Baylor previously at Temple. That clearly was their top guy. And they didn't get their top guy. <laughs> because they didn't want to step up to the plate and match the offer that Matt Rule was given by the Carolina Panthers. Now, granted, seven years, $62 million for a college head coach with zero previous NFL head coaching experience is incredibly risky. There is no question about that. That is a lot of money and a significant length of investment to put into a guy that is an unproven NFL head coaching commodity. I, I kind of get that. Like, that's a big risk. But ultimately for the Giants, that was clearly your top guy. Clearly your top guy. There is no denying that. There is no pretending that's not the case. And you ultimately didn't get it done. So you went to your backup plan. And you hired... New England Patriots, yes, from the Bill Belichick coaching tree that has been so significantly successful in the NFL. They hired Joe Judge, 38-year-old Joe Judge, special teams coordinator and wide receivers coach for the New England Patriots. That, that is the hiring that's supposed to get Giants fans excited. That is... That is the hiring that is supposed to be so much significantly different from Pat Shermer, a guy in and of himself, as an offensive coordinator, has been successful in the league. But again, proving that just because a guy is a coordinator that is successful, in no way, shape, or form guarantees that when they are running their own program entirely, that they're going to get the job done and be successful in that role. It is a crapshoot, I will grant you. But you have to look at this deal, if you're a Giants fan specifically, and say, what the hell is this? Instead of going for the spectacular kind of sexy hiring of somebody like a Matt Rule, he kind of went with the eat your vegetables and say your prayers type of hiring here. And I don't even know if it's that. It's more like eat your vegetables while going down a 200 foot drop on a roller coaster by hiring Joe Judge. Bill Belichick, I'm sure, gave a glowing review. And again, what does that mean coming from Bill Belichick when it comes to his previous protégés? They have had a very, very mixed bag in terms of performance when running their own teams in the NFL, leaning towards not very good. Now, maybe Joe Judge is different. And if you say, well, my God, he wasn't even a coordinator of an offense or a defense, why in the hell would you want to hire him? Well, to be fair, John Harbaugh, was a special teams coordinator in Philly when he got the job in Baltimore. And I most certainly think Ravens fans believe that after 12 seasons that that has worked out to that organization's advantage. Sometimes you can't get so caught up in the title that a guy has or the previous position that the guy has because it might not reflect what their true upside, their true potential is. You know, and you're talking about with the Patriots, their special teams unit is outstanding. So that has to at least in some way be a reflection of that, the uh, coordinator of that unit, which was Joe Judge. But then you could also counter with that and say he was also in charge of the wide receivers. And the biggest reason the Patriots are eliminated from the playoffs is because their skill position talent stunk this year. And in particular, the wide receivers contributed little to nothing outside of Edelman. And to which you would say that is also true. So it is certainly a mixed bag and it is certainly risky. And as far as the thing of saying, well, they didn't even get their first first choice, so that automatically makes them a joke, depends on how you want to look at it. As a general rule, if you want to go down, you want to go down swinging with the choices that you ultimately made, and particularly you want to be able to go down swinging with your first choice. But I go back to the Chicago Bears in 2004, because typical Bears crap, 
Jerry Angelo had been pining to fire Dick Duran for over a year. He wanted to bring in Nick Saban. He had a hard-on for his buddy Nick Saban. And then when it came to nut-cutting time, because it's the Bears, they came up about a million dollars short a year because that's what they do. So he failed to get his own guy. Ultimately, settling on their second choice, which was Lovey Smith. And Lovey Smith was easily the most successful head coach in that Bears organization since Mike Ditka. Lovey Smith coached the team for nine years. Lovey Smith led them to divisional titles, playoff appearances, a Super Bowl appearance, all with crappy quarterback play. So it worked out for the Bears. They didn't get their primary guy. Because a couple of years later, Nick Saban went to Miami, and that was such a robust failure. He ended up having to go back with his tail between his legs to college. I'm granted he went to Alabama, and he did Nick Saban things there, sure. But again, he was the Bears' primary choice. You look at heading into that 2018 offseason. The top choice of the Indianapolis Colts was Josh McDaniels. They were actually ready to hire Josh McDaniels. Everything was done until it wasn't done, and he backed out of the deal and decided to stay in New England. So they brought in their second choice, which was Frank Wright. And after that 1-5 start in 2018, the Colts ended up making the playoffs. And you even look at this year. They started off, what was it, 5-2? After the retirement saga with Andrew Luck? You know, the Colts have done well with that. So sometimes just because you don't get the primary option doesn't automatically mean it's going to be a failure, that it's not going to succeed. Because it can, and it certainly can, and I just provided you a couple examples of where it can. But I look at this more so and I say, Joe Judge, a guy who wasn't an offensive or defensive coordinator, doesn't have established chops as a head coach really anywhere else that matters, and yet he's getting an opportunity and leapfrogging a lot of other guys. You could talk about the NFL being a meritocracy all you want, and maybe from a player standpoint it largely is, but from a coaching standpoint that certainly is not always true, and in particular when you talk about the Rooney rule. It's almost like it's a token version of an affirmative action, is exactly what it is. We gotta bring in a guy or two to cross it off of our bucket list, we gotta take care of this, it's a checklist item, but we're not actually going to take them seriously. You tell me why a Joe Judge is so much more qualified than an Eric Bieniemy to be the next head football coach of the New York Giants. If you say, well, Eric Bieniemy was an offensive coordinator that didn't have play calling duties under Andy Reid, well, Christ Almighty, neither did Matt Nagy. And that didn't bother, stop him from getting a head job. Neither did Doug Peterson. Didn't stop him from getting a head job. At least he was a freaking coordinator, and he's been a part of a successful team, been involved under Andy Reid, a much more successful coaching tree at that. I would certainly rather take a fruit from the Andy Reid coaching tree than I would the Bill Belichick one. Not to mention the fact when the Giants are talking about we're interested in Matt Rule, and it was clearly their top guy, I think about somebody like a David Shaw at Stanford. No, he's never won a national championship, but Stanford, for the most part, has been a consistently good program under David Shaw, and you've heard people talking about for years how David Shaw would be successful at the NFL level. And if I promise you, you were willing to step up for David Shaw in the same way you would have for Matt Rule, you might have been able to lure him away from Stanford. But why the hell can't this guy get a job? Or even if we say, talking about true meritocracy, hiring a Joe Judge is like, a corporation, and they do it all the time, hires some college kid that just graduated with no damn job experience over somebody with 15 years of experience, including previous experience with other companies, for the exact same job that you have, but they'll go with the young college kid because they can pay him less and because he has the degree. That's that your CEO has a college degree. Everybody else in leadership has to have a flipping college degree too. Doesn't matter about qualifications. Doesn't matter about relevant job experience or anything like that. That's what the hell this is like. Because I could then sit there and you can laugh all you want and that's fine. But you got guys like Jim Caldwell who went to a Super Bowl, went to the playoffs as the coach of the Colts, then went to Detroit, went to the playoffs with them, got fired after a 9-7 season, all the while Matt Patricia has totally sucked in his two years in Detroit, but his big fat ass gets a third year. How the hell does that work out? 
Hmm, I wonder. Then you sit there and you look at a situation like a Marvin Lewis. Joke all you want. Black Jeff Fisher. Blah, blah, blah. But the man was an NFL head coach for 16 seasons. Took the Bungles to the playoffs in seven of those seasons. Do we forget just how truly bad the Bengals were in the 90s? They were the skid marks of that decade. Every bit as bad and irrelevant as the Browns have been mostly over their two decades being back in the league. So while Marvin Lewis was not phenomenal, Marvin Lewis has more credibility, more proven success as an NFL head coach, and yet the New York Giants, after failing to get their top option, go for somebody like this. They go for a guy that's a special teams coordinator and a freak of wide receivers coach overseeing a wide receiver unit that stunk this year. But meanwhile, guys like Doug Marone get to keep their job for reasons unbeknownst to me because apparently Sean Khan is satisfied with losing. Guys like Matt Patricia get to keep their job even though they have no business keeping their job whatsoever. If Pat Shermer deserved to be fired, and he did, then why the hell are Doug Marone and freaking Matt Patricia still NFL head coaches? Exactly. Ask yourself that question. Like you got the 49ers defensive coordinator, Robert Saleh. Very likely looks like he's going to be shut out of the head coaching hiring. Out of the available openings in a league that is predominantly minority players. Out of the four openings that have been filled, only one of them was filled by a minority, and that was Ron Rivera. And it almost seems like he's more palpable to owners than a black head coach is. I'm sorry, you have got to call it the way it is. That is not saying that somebody deserves a job just because most of the players in the league are black, therefore most of the coaches should automatically be black. No, not at all. If 60 to 70 percent of your league is black players, because they are the best at what they do, then that is working the way that it should. A meritocracy. Equality in terms of the best make it and the rest don't. You're not saying this guy can't play in the league because they're white or this guy can't play in the league because they're black. If they can play, they can play. It doesn't matter. But somehow when it comes to coaching and leadership in organizations, Time after time after time, we see less qualified white candidates, less experienced white candidates, leapfrog more experienced, more qualified minority candidates. And I guarantee to you, guarantee to you, that if Ron Rivera hadn't already been given the opportunity in Carolina and had his success there, there is no way in hell Daniel Snyder is going to sit there and hire Ron Rivera. It would have been some other type of pasta salad, raisins putting in mayonnaise eating screwball. What's the point of having the Rooney Rule if it's only going to do token things? Get people token interviews. You are wasting their time. You're wasting everybody's time. The most precious commodity we have in this world is time. And I don't see why anybody should be wasting it. There clearly is a fundamental problem in terms of the infrastructure of the league. And this Rooney Rule, while you could say it's created opportunities for a few, it hasn't done nearly enough to create opportunities for nearly enough people. And I don't know why general managers and owners are so afraid to tie themselves to black head coaching candidates, because if you want to say, well, you've had black head coaches that have failed, let's look at the overwhelming number of mayonnaise guys that have failed as well. You got one job opening left, right, Cleveland? What's the chances that a qualified minority candidate is even realistically being considered? It's Urban Meyer, it's Josh McDaniels, more likely than not, and that is it. Meanwhile, a defensive coordinator from a top defensive unit this year is going to get shut the hell out because a freaking special teams coordinator got the job. Unbelievable. I wouldn't be surprised if this hiring ultimately 
farted all over the Giants' face in that organization or was successful. But either way, it doesn't change the fact that deep-seated problems that we have where qualified minority candidates are not getting the opportunities that their resume indicates they deserve, but we take less qualified people. Oh, my God, Joe Judge is trying to get a Ph.D. in teaching. Well, then go teach at a university. Give me a break.